staff notices Army Man crying inside the airport and decides to take matter into their own hands. But before we start, please give the video a like and make sure to subscribe to Wonderbot and hit the bell so you'll never miss any uploads from us. Brooks Lindsay, 25, is an Army soldier of the 114th Field Artillery Regiment, 2nd Battalion of the Mississippi National Guard. To be an Army soldier was Brooks' childhood dream and he's been a very emotional person from his childhood. His hometown is Jackson, Mississippi. Brooks met Haley Wilson, the love of his life, in 2015. The moment they both met, they knew they were made for each other and nothing has moved them apart. Their love increased with each passing day and in November 2017, they tied the knot to stay together forever. Soon after the wedding, the Lindsays had not expected that they would get another great news. The news about Haley being pregnant broke out very unexpectedly and the couple had no idea about it. They could not believe that they would be holding their firstborn in their hands in just a short time span of nine months. Right after the news of Haley's pregnancy was announced, the newlywed couple started baby classes and their trips to the hospital for regular health checkups of the mother-to-be and the baby. It was on one of these trips that the couple got the extraordinary news that they would be having a girl. After the elongated celebrations, it was now time for Brooks to go back and fulfill his ambitions. Duty called and he had to leave with a heavy heart. Haley was prepared for this since the very beginning because she knew what the army meant for Brooks. But both of them had a little hope of being together for the birth of their firstborn. Since Brooks and Haley were not sure if the father would be able to make it to the birth of the baby, they decided on a name for the baby together. Before Brooks left for the services, they settled on a very cute name for their baby girl and named her Millie. It was finally time for the couple to part their ways because duty always comes first for a soldier. Bags had been packed but hopes were still high for the two if Brooks could somehow make it for the birth of the baby and Brooks bid adieu to seven-month pregnant Haley. The Red Cross does not permit the soldiers any kinds of leaves, if the mother and unborn baby are in perfect health conditions. Brooks and I have been practicing my call to the Red Cross because we heard it was really hard to get men home for births and we were told the only way it would actually work is if I was in distress," Haley said. However, little did the Lindsays know what was in fate for them. After Brooks left for his duty, Haley went for routine checkups on her own. All seemed perfectly fine for the mother and the child. The doctor had said that they were both healthy and there was no problem. But was it really the case or was the doctor missing on something? When it was established that Haley was doing fine with the baby, it was also confirmed that she would not be able to have Brooks along with her at the time of giving birth to their child. Both of them had now lost all hopes and were just trying to move forward from this fact. The feelings of Haley were perplexing in themselves. On one side, she was happy and satisfied that she and the unborn baby were perfectly healthy and doing just fine. But on the other side, she was not able to digest the fact that her husband would not be able to make it for the delivery of the baby. But was the doctor sure about the health of the mother? When Haley and Brooks were finally trying to make peace with the fact that they would not be able to be together for the birth of their child, a piece of unexpected news came in. Haley went to the doctor just like any other usual day. Little did she know that it was going to be a drastically unusual day for her. After Haley came back home from a regular appointment with the doctor, she got a call from the doctor which was not a piece of good news. The doctor had called to inform Haley that she had developed a case of preeclampsia, wherein the blood pressure of the mother would keep on increasing until the child's born, and her condition would affect the other organs of her body, so something had to be done urgently. Haley told that after returning from the hospital, I received a call from my doctor that my blood pressures were too high and the baby was being stressed. She told me to be at the hospital in an hour and they would go ahead and induce. She called up Brooks and told him the whole scenario and how her delivery was preponed. As soon as Haley and Brooks heard of the preponed delivery, the hope that Brooks would be coming home sparked in them. Now that Haley was facing some complications in her delivery, there was a possibility that the Red Cross would allow a few days to brook. Haley reached Red Cross to talk about her situation. After cross-checking the medical conditions of Haley's case with the hospital, Red Cross granted a four-day leave to Brooks. He would finally come home. But none of the 2B parents were aware that they were soon going to experience the best as well as the worst days of their lives. As soon as the leave was approved, Brooks booked his flight to be with his wife and their baby. From his home base in Fort Bliss near El Paso, 
he had a flight from Dallas from where he would have to interchange for Jackson He was so excited to reach back to his hometown, but destiny had other plans Destiny seemed to be confused for Brooks. It was still unclear whether Brooks would be there to witness the birth of the child or not He was going to be there, but also not be He'd finally gotten a flight to Jackson for the next morning, but it was delayed, so he decided to stay at the airport only. During all confusion, Haley was admitted to the hospital for delivery. Her water broke at 10 a.m. in the morning, which meant the baby Millie could come into this world at any moment. Friday morning, my water was broken at 7 a.m., and Pitocin, a drug often used in births, began, Haley said later. But where was the father of the baby? Brooks had landed in Dallas at 2 p.m., he was at the airport and the flight to Jackson was delayed. Haley was already in the hospital, but Brooks was still 402 miles away from his wife and the baby. I was sure that we would already have a baby by the time he arrived, but at least he gets to come home for four days, so I was taking whatever I could get, Haley recalled. After hours of delay of Brooks' flight, there was no ray of hope at all for reaching the hospital. Haley waited in pain till 5 p.m. for her husband, but she could not bear it any longer. The time had come that she'd reached the last stage of labor without any chance of Brooks' arrival. The couple had zero expectations of being together now, and Haley changed the names of people who would be present with her at the time of delivery at the last minute. She had listed her husband very happily, but now she had to alter the name to her mother-in-law and stepmother. Brooks, on the other hand, would have to miss the most beautiful moment of his life. Or did God have something else in mind? The whole family tried to put in efforts to do something about the expected couple situation, but there was no solution available. No video recording or photography was allowed inside the hospital room, so even that option seemed futile for Brooks to see the birth of his girl child. But Brooks' mother, Teresa, knew what the importance of the birth of a child holds in the life of the parents, and she was adamant on doing something for her son to see his baby girl come to life. She made a plan and was smart enough to act upon it, even when the authorities were against it. Teresa FaceTimed Brooks, and since video recording or photography was prohibited in the hospital, she did not openly video call her son in front of the doctor. She hid her phone in her hands, awkwardly positioning it in front of her shirt. But the doctor soon noticed that something was fishy in Teresa's behavior and confronted her. Lindsay's family doctor had understood the family situation on explaining it to her, and therefore she allowed Teresa to video call her son. It was unbelievable for Brooks that he would finally be able to be a part of the process of his daughter's delivery. But things really did not seem to be in favor of Brooks that day. When he had finally been able to find a way to be with his to-be-born daughter and wife, the flight that was delayed for so many hours suddenly had cleared up and was ready to board the passengers. Brooks knew that if he would board the flight, he would not be able to be beside his wife, even virtually, and would have to spend the time on his flight in ignorance. And so he did not want to leave the airport and disconnect the call that had kept him connected to his wife. While Brooks was seeing his wife giving birth to their daughter, his eyes were glued to the phone screen, and he did not care about the world. His name was announced several times for the boarding procedure, but he did not bother about it and ignored all of it. Haley recalled, Brooks was telling me it was okay and I was doing so good, and I heard him wincing and saying wow through my pushes. But just as Brooks moved his eyes a little upwards, he saw the airport authorities walking towards him. They wondered what Brooks was up to and pushed him to board the flight. Lastly, Brooks was left with no other option but to board the flight. Just when he was so close to seeing his baby girl come to life, he'd have to disconnect from his family and be in the flight where it would be impossible for him to know if his wife and daughter are even fine or not. Brooks was in a shattered state of mind and heart and had too much pressure on him. But he soon discovered that he was not alone in this. While he'd been on the phone, his fellow passengers had noticed him and figured out what was going on. Each passenger that knew of Brooks' condition tried to delay the flights as much as they could on their part and support him so he could be on the call for a little longer and witness the birth of his daughter. Just as a soldier is there for his countrymen, today the people were there for him. When no more delay was possible by the passengers and the authorities had finally decided to board, Brooks had no option left. Just as he was about to press the end call button, he and in fact the whole airport heard a scream from the other side that shouted, don't let him board that flight. And right after the scream, Brooks was numb when he witnessed the magical moment of his daughter come into the world. He had tears flowing down and with the widest of smiles, he was lost in a world of his own where he saw his baby girl for the first time. 
Millie, Fritz, and Lindsay entered the world at exactly 5.23 p.m., minutes before the gates of her father's flight to home were going to be closed. And it was not just the Lindsay family that welcomed Millie. The whole airport had been witnessing her birth and cheered and welcomed the baby. It was not Brooks or Haley alone, but one big happy family of all the passengers at the airport that was delighted by the birth of this baby. They were all together for the brave soldier who was alone at the airport at such an auspicious occasion. Finally, when Brooks had seen that his wife and the newborn baby were healthy and fine, he boarded his flight way back home to Jackson. It was filled with emotions of happiness, blessings, and excitement of holding his newborn in his arms after seeing her for the first time. Brooks finally arrived home to his wife Haley and their newborn Millie at 7.20 p.m., and Haley asked all 17 people present in the hospital room to leave. She wanted the moment to be her husband's and their daughter alone. After a long day full of roller coaster rides, Brooks finally saw his baby girl in awe and celebrated the moment of taking her in his arms. I held my daughter for the first time and I hugged and kissed my wife, Brooks later said. It was emotional, especially not being there for the actual birth, to get to see her and hold her for the very first time. The four heavenly days for Haley and Brooks had to come to an end very soon, and so they did. There was a point when they were not even sure if they could be together for the birth of the child, and now that that had been achieved, they accepted the four days that they had got with generosity. Whenever the passengers finally understood what was going on with Brooks, one of the passengers, Tracy Dover, recorded the beautiful story secretly. She said, When we heard the baby cry, we all rejoiced for him. I wanted to share this because I never want us to forget about our soldiers who serve us every day and the sacrifices they make. After learning to change diapers and waking up in the middle of the night several times, it was now time for the soldier to go back to serve his nation. Duty called him and he finally bid goodbye to his little family. Brooks recalled, My only intentions were get home to see my daughter being born, he told the Washington Post, but it turned into something much more than we anticipated. <laughs>